about. It's okay. Sit. 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 fit right so that's not going to work okay. that well um we could swap that out after um i have an e-collar that i they didn't they didn't they didn't charge it so i can't use it today. that's okay yeah but still you, you don't want to depend on the e-collar either that that behavior there won't change with or without the e-collar it'll just so what do i do uh well we gotta we gotta dissect the behavior okay that's what we gotta do okay. um so that stuff there is like if he if we had let them all go, he would have nipped at her. There would have been a dog fight. Whether or not we're aggressive or not, it's still behavior that's that's unmanaged. Come here, pipes. So I'm gonna move her around. You could just chill there for a second. Okay. Come here, pipes. It's a good thing she's mellow. Huh? She's well. She's very balanced. That's why I picked her. She's not gonna pick a fight. She's not gonna back down. So she's not that submissive. Yeah. <laughs> so the moral of the story is is. He can't meet another dog with that behavior because it's not right. fair because he's going to get himself in trouble. So he's going to go out and try to bite another dog versus go and be interested in another dog. So that's the first thing we got to break because we can't have that because he's going to get himself in trouble and he knows that that's, you know, we know that that could happen. So we don't want to do okay. that. Pipes, come on. The build that you're getting is, is not really provoked, which means it's just his intentions to not like the other dog. Right? So. Oh, good. So I've got the dog that I can put in my backyard and not hang out with other dogs at all? Uh, nah, right now, yeah. But uh, I don't know the, the reasoning yet. But there's a lot of things that you could be doing to help it. I would like to do that. Yeah. So one thing is, is um, so go ahead and I what I want you to do is bring him from the fence and back real quick. Okay. Sit. Sit. And then, and then walk away from him. Good. Now put him back into a heel. heel. And then back to me. You want to stop a lot of the uh, conversation that you don't need to have with them. Right. The other thing too is is when you're when you're working with a dog for so like what you do is you say you tell a command and you correct him at the same time. Okay. So. I do, don't I? Yes. So when you say sit, you go, or if I said down, I'd say down, I'd correct. If I say sit, I'd correct. If I say heel, I'd correct. And the purpose of, of any correction or any consequence to a dog is not to imply it every single time because then they start checking out. So originally you said that the engagement that you get around other dogs is kind of sloppy or non-existing, right? So when you're, when you're working with him and you're correcting him no matter what he does, whether he does it wrong or right, he becomes frustrated, like you and I would. Okay. Right? Right. Like if I said, hey, do your job, and you did it every day, and I kept saying, hey, do your job, you're going to be like, well, what the hell? I might as well just do it really bad because I'm going to get yelled at anyway. Okay. Do you know what I mean? So that's one thing is just make sure that when you're working with him, you don't want to imply a correction or, or any type of pressure onto the dog if you're just kicking them into gear. So you go into a heel, or you go into a sit, or you go into a down, or you go into a place, or whatever. You're adding pressure every time on top of that. Does that make sense? Right. So if I walk over there and tell him to place, I shouldn't have to pull on him at all. At all. So I see a lot of people do this. And the reason why it happens is because you're... It, it, I'm conditioned. You, yeah, you're conditioned, but it also just makes the dog look better. Because if I said sit and the dog sat, I said down, I said, and then I, and I said place and I yanked the dog onto the thing, they, they're not really showing me or you that they know the command. They're doing it because they have no other choice. Right. So the command actually gets kind of deteriorated. The actual purpose of the command, the quality of the command doesn't really exist. And so when you ask a dog to do it off leash, what happens? They're not going to do it. Because they're so in tune with, we're teaching them that this is sit, this is down, this is place. Okay. Right? So I would much rather have a communication and relationship with the dog 
that when I said, hey, sit, they sat, good. Yeah. When I said down, they downed, good. Yeah. Good. good because what happens is, is the dog will then get conditioned to only listen to you if you're applying pressure to him. And that's, so your relationship is not great because you're, you're asking him to do something and then right when he does it, you punish him every time. Right? I got it. So, you're right. yeah. So make sure that when you're working with him. So this isn't, this isn't like the key that, that is going to open the gate of... But if I don't have him on a leash, I can do that easily. Right. But the point is, is when he's on the leash, he always feels pressured. And he doesn't like it. Right? Because he knows that if this thing goes on and he's out, he's going to get corrected and corrected and punished and punished and punished and punished and punished over and over again. See, it's really easy for us when we put a correction tool on a dog... So just don't worry about him, because he's he's good. I gotta I gotta work on you. So it's it's really no it's really easy when you put a correction tool on a dog, to to have them comply with you. So it's kind of like a, it's a band aid over what you actually want, you know. So it's kind of cheating. Okay. Right. So the point is, is if if I told her off leash, Piper come, and she came, good. Piper sit, good. Piper down, good. And all of that would be very positive. So what, what would she like from me? She would like to work, right? She'd be like, oh, this is great. Now, imagine putting a piece of equipment on a dog and saying, hey, do this. Wham, do this. Wham, do this. Wham. And because it's so easy for us to, to, to add a consequence with the prong collar or the e-collar. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> He's probably just getting in the shade and that's fine. I'll move closer to you. So it's so easy for us to put a, a piece of equipment on and, and kind of abuse it a little bit. You know, so if I said, Piper, just because my thing is, is I want to help people with their relationship with their dog. Ultimately, that's really going to be the foundations of whether your dog listens to you or not. Right. Right. So that's one thing I'm noticing is you're going, Piper, sit, pop. See, and she did it, but I didn't correct her. Good. She goes, oh, that was cool. Right. But if I said, Piper, sit, wham, she's going to go, oh, uh, Piper down, wham. Right. Piper down. Now pressure. Down. Good. Good girl. Okay, come. Good. So I'm... The relationship that you want with your dog is very, like, fun, outgoing, playful. It's, it's the relationship you have with your dog. Your dog doesn't have that with you because he's getting punished all the time. And some of the reactivity that you're getting is simply because he doesn't like the leash because you're, you're almost abusing the, the tool because it's not being used properly. And I mean that very lightly. I know that you're not abusing your dog. I'm just saying. No, I know. Do you know what I'm mean. saying? I mean, yep. at, you know, most yep. of, if he's not on leash, he's great, I probably. can tell him to yep. come. I can tell him to sit. I can tell him to place and yep. stay. Yep. He's good to go. So, so what I'm doing is I'm overcompensating yes. because I'm in a yes. situation that I feel threatened. Bingo. That's it. So you're getting uncomfortable, you're getting anxious, um, you say a lot of things that you don't need to say, and you add a lot of pressure that you don't need to add. Okay. And it drives him nuts. So picture it this, okay? I'll put it in a scenario so like... I can't sing to him anymore. You can sing to him, don't talk to him. So, okay. so picture it like this. He's the only one who doesn't care if I sing. Yeah, that's sing. Sing all you want. But picture it like this, okay? So I'm going to put it in this scenario and tell me if this makes sense. You have him on the, on the prong collar, e-collar, slip collar, flat collar, whatever it is. And you're fine, and, you're, and you just told me he's great off leash. When there's nothing, there's nothing on him, he's great. Good. Now, you put the collar on, and all of a sudden, he's got this suppressed pressure on. And he goes, well, I can't make any good decisions because I always get corrected no matter what. So you do good, you still get nailed. Doesn't make sense to him. So that creates frustration, right? So now in come a dog. The dog's there, and then all of a sudden, you go into anxious mode and you go okay buddy okay but uh so let's sit 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 down 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 stay sit and all these things and so he goes okay every single time another dog comes out you lose your shit right and so you you overkill what you actually need to do does that make sense absolutely so what's developing is is every time another dog comes around he gets a ton of pressure unnecessarily needed and so, ultimately, in the that I'm upset. well, and, and I don't think that you even become upset. I think you change your whole demeanor. So when you're with them and you're you're nice and calm and your energy's good and you're walking and everything's good, another dog comes and you go, and then you ask him to do all these things. You correct them anyway, and he goes, "I hate dogs because it makes my owner freak out." And so the the reactivity that you're getting 
is not necessarily my dog doesn't like other dogs. The reactivity you're getting is my owner loses her cool when other dogs are around, which makes me not like them. So what I'm going to try to do is chase another dog away so you can be calm again. Does that make That's sense? what I'm saying is he, he has no real, like if we had a real aggressive case, we wouldn't be able to have this conversation. The dogs wouldn't be, he would be constantly going. Real aggression is rare compared to how many dogs I actually work with. It's all about the reactivity on the leash. They build and build and build. And so because what happens is, is it's, it's we condition the dog. So Pavlov's conditioning, a noise goes off, something happens, right? So another dog comes, you get nervous and you start overcorrecting, you start overkilling things, you start talking to him, you start making not sense of things, and then he's like, I don't like dogs. Because every time they're out, it's discomfort to him. And so he's not actually aggressive with other dogs. So if you and I walked around here and got really comfortable and we were fine, he's not gonna go after the other dog, which makes you think, oh, it's okay if we're on a walk. And it's really what the case is, is it's okay as long as you, you calm down. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, because I've walked him with other dogs and you're comfortable. that are on leash. I mean, as long as they're on leash and he's on leash, he doesn't seem to care. Right. But uh, they smell each other. But more importantly, you don't care. That's what's triggering all of this. When you're out and we're, so you just said when they're on a leash, he doesn't care. But ultimately, you're, you're the variable here. The so leash. when we're on the leash, you're comfortable. Because you know that I'm not going to let her go to him and he's not going to freak out. So your comfortability of the dog being on a leash is making him comfortable. So it's not that he's comfortable with other dogs in the leash. It's you're putting on really good energy when other dogs are on the leash, which makes him ultimately comfortable. The biggest thing I can give you walking away to, to work on is be conscious of what you're doing with the dog when you're out, especially with a correction tool. And relax. And relax, yes. Don't get freaked out because when I know that there's another dog around that I'm, I'm going to have it. And that I'm going to expect exactly. to have. And if you, if you feel like you need to talk, then talk to yourself in your mind because the more information you give the dog during that time, it's going to freak them out even more. So just, yes. be, just, be, more, just be more sincere. Quality over quantity. Don't say a bunch of stuff because all of them are going to mean like little, little, tiny bit to him. If you say like three things to him within three hours, he's going to be like, ooh, I like that. But if you have a storytelling conversation with him every five minutes, then your quality of your words don't matter. And our words are what dictates our dog's behavior. Okay. Does that make sense? All right, two, I just have two questions. Yeah, quick. yeah, sure. Um, if, when, I, when I'm standing here talking to somebody and I tell them to sit, mm -hmm. if he lays down, that's okay. Yeah, um, you know, that's, that's a situation. I really leave that up to you. Um, because I don't, as long as he's relaxed, that's where I want him to be. Yeah, and if, if he is, then that's fine. But if you know he's, if you're really being um, kind of, um, if you're kind of being, you know, extremely... Uh, I'm not going to take him to shows or anything. Right, so what I would do is if you know he's going to lay down after you put him in a sit, then just put him in a down. That way he's successful.